Hello, everyone. So now we get into um, one of the most important topics in Android uh, app programming, which is the activity lifecycle. So we have seen example of activity, um, and activity lifecycle is basically how the system interacts with the activity uh, because of different user interactions or you know some triggers from the system. Um, but before we go and talk about uh, those activity life cycles um, stages and then methods, um, callback methods to deal with them, uh, we'll start building an example or app whose name is Dice Games. And we'll use this app uh, for uh, next few weeks and to introduce a lot of new concepts um, in Android. So in this particular slide set, we are going to talk about um, uh, using linear layout and then setting up on-click listeners and using the logging, me logging mechanism in Android. So first of all, what is the Dice Game app? Dice games is going to be a single player game with dice, as the name suggests, where the developer, uh, you know, uh, where the um, the player can move from uh, one kind of game to another and you know play the game. And uh, we'll also add an element of gambling to it, uh, where you start with uh, a wallet activity, which is our first activity, as shown here in the picture. Um, and um, as it says, you click the die button uh, in this you know, very fairly basic version, you click the die button to roll it and uh, you earn five coins every time you roll a six. So this is going to be a regular six facet die. Um, then later we'll add navigation from this um, wallet activity, we'll call this a wallet activity by the way, uh, and we'll add navigation from this to go to other uh, activities, which are actually the games that you play. And in those games, you know, you can gamble and then win or lose some money. So whenever you come back um, to this, it should reflect the new number of coins and it should allow you to earn more coins from this point, okay? So that is the basic idea of this um, you know, fairly simple uh, game app, but uh, um, as I said, you know, we'll develop your over the next few lectures and we'll introduce many interesting aspects uh, through that discussion. Okay, so uh, first of all, so how do we model the die? Um, here is one way of thinking about it. You know, there could be, of course, better ways, but I think this is fairly simple, straightforward, and we'll use this uh, throughout our example. So we'll build the die itself as an interface in Java, which has two methods, a roll method, which simulates a die roll. So it should generate a random integer between one and six every time uh, the roll method is called. And then um, this, this is a void returning method, by the way. So rolling itself simply rolls it, but doesn't show you the value. And then the value method will return the value on the top face as a result of the uh, most recent roll. Okay. So we start with a zero and after that there are rolls. And then we implement this interface in a class named die six. Six indicates um, a standard six facet die. So why this uh, interface and class level? Well, um, you can perhaps imagine, you know, some games can have a, a different kind of a die, say a 20 facet die or something like that. And it should still have the same interface methods, um, but you can implement it differently. That is the idea. So, um, We'll often use a UML notation like this, by the way. So what it uh, indicates here is faces is a static int at the class level. Um, you know, it's a static and its value is six. It's a constant. Um, and then um, it uses a reference to Java util random and basically uses it to create the random number. And it uses an integer m value as a member of this class, as a field of this class. Um, um, uh, for maintaining the current value, basically. Um, so by the way, another small point um, about uh, um, conventions, um, we'll use um, this lowercase m and then the name of the variable. So m value, um, et cetera, m RNG, et cetera, 
uh, for the member variables. It uh, helps disambiguate between, say, any static members versus um, the instance members, and M is for the instance members. So it kind of serves as a self-documenting uh, variable name. Okay. All right. So um, yeah. So both of these are you know pure Java um, classes and interfaces. Uh, so this is what it will look like. Um, yeah. By the way, I would encourage everyone to not just uh, you know rush through these videos um, for next few topics at least, but rather um, you know spend time. Um, writing the code yourself and developing the app along the way okay all right so the interface is going to be like this the void role method and the int returning value method and it can be implemented um, this way so um, you have uh, the package name of course so it should be there in the interface as well uh, but i'm pretty sure you can take care of such errors on your own by now and you import Java util random. Um, we already saw the private static final int faces and then the two um, instance variables. Um, the constructor will simply create a new random number generator and attach it to the reference mrng. And then we implement the role method here um, and the value method here. So inside the role method, um, we are calling next int on the um, instance of random and um, we use the overloaded variation of next int uh, which takes an integer argument and uses it as the upper bound for creating the random integers so basically this method call itself returns uh, a random integer between zero inclusive and faces whose value is six exclusive so we add one to it to keep our value in the proper range so, and then, uh, you know, value is basically a getter which keeps returning the value of M value. Um, so why uh, role and value are different? Um, the idea is, you know, uh, you may want to invoke value or get the value of the die from different places and you should not end up rolling the die every time you try to get that value. Okay, all right. Next, we talk about uh, the view part. So in the greetings example, we saw a constraint layout, which is what the Android Studio builds for you. Um, and there are several advantages of the constraint layout. Um, mainly, it's a flexible, efficient uh, way of uh, rendering the UI. It, the constraint lay layout basically um, you know, removes uh, a lot of hierarchies um, and uh, creates a fairly uh, a, sim a fairly flexible, efficient, as it says, um, and flattened uh, view of hierarchy. Um, but it is difficult to get it at first. And our current focus is on learning activities, what happens inside an activity, instead of looking at the UI itself. At the same time, you know, I had to introduce a linear layout at some point. So this, this seems to be the right uh, place. Linear layout um, is easier to build so easier for the programmers, developers like us. Um, what it does is basically it puts elements in either horizontal or vertical order. And then um, you know, to create complex UI, you end up um, creating a lot of uh, linear layout inside linear layout type of hierarchies. Okay. So that's what we'll see uh, in this example. So here is uh, the UI um, you know, that we saw a couple of slides back on the right hand side. And here is the component tree um, of that UI. And we'll see how each element maps to uh, you know, what view on the UI. So the top level or the root linear layout um, you know, basically is the entire screen. Um, inside that, you have a wallet label um, text view. And it is basically what shows this information. Okay, um, as you can see on component tree, it's pulling it from at string wallet underscore info. That's where it's pulling it from. Then you have a horizontal linear layout, which is basically um, these coins and the number of coins, right? So you see the coins here as a text view and number of coins also as a text view. So they are also pulling strings from 
um, at string resources. Uh, we have a string slash coins, which is the word coins, and a string slash zero, which is uh, the value zero. So once again, those who are uh, developing the app along the way, um, you should create all these strings at the appropriate place. And you know how to do that from one of our previous videos. Finally, we have a button. Um, a button is an element uh, you can you know, create, and we'll see how to do that in the code in a second. Um, and button is a basically a clickable text view. So you can click on it, um, and it should then respond to that click. Okay. All right, so here is the XML um, code for generating this layout. So um, you can simply open the um, um, wallet activity, uh, activity underscore wallet dot XML. Um, by the way, uh, you know, when you start the project, you basically create a new project, uh, give it the name Dice Games, and uh, name the main activity, rename it to wallet activity, okay? Um, I missed that step. Uh, I missed mentioning that step at the beginning, but uh, that's where you should start, all right? So then um, go to the XML file for the layout, um, and delete everything except the first line. So basically, delete the constraint layout that the IDE generated for you, and replace it with this linear layout. Um, so linear layout will have, uh, you know, uh, as, you, as you start creating linear layout, it will populate some things. Um, the important ones here um, are the, the attributes for um, center, uh, gravity and whose value is center, which basically means um, the children of this layout will be at the center of its parent. Okay? Um, so that's why we see um, all the uh, all the text views and buttons uh, at the center of the screen. Next one is orientation. Um, it's vertical, so basically horizontal or vertical. Two options. Vertical means they are placed one below the other. Uh, you know, no surprise there. Okay. All right. Then inside that, you create a text view like this. So you have um, you have given it an ID text underscore info. Um, I'm also going to use this convention of using txt underscore btn underscore etc. in the XML um, to indicate you know what type of element it is, and we'll see that is helpful later when you grab that element uh, in the activity. Okay. All right, uh, we say the width of this element um, should match parent, um, sorry, before that. So the text here is the add string wallet info. Um, that's what we are getting. And, um, and the text is center aligned. Okay. So the width and height of this, um, they are set to match parent, so it stretches um, all through all the width, and then the height is wrap content, so it doesn't stretch beyond um, how this string is defined. Um, all right. Then inside that, uh, we have a linear layout, if you remember, for showing this information, the number of coins, and uh, this is going to be a horizontal linear layout. As you can see, coins and number are next to each other, not uh, one below the other. Um, but this linear layout doesn't have uh, the orientation attribute. That is because the default orientation is horizontal. So if you skip it, it's still going to create a horizontal um, a linear layout. Now, um, inside this, we put the two text views, which are next to one another. We give them some IDs, uh, txt balance label and txt balance. Uh, we'll grab the txt balance in, uh, in, the, in the activities code and keep updating it uh, based on the die roll. Okay, uh, so padding is another attribute that uh, you may want to use in different uh, designs. It basically creates uh, a buffer space of whatever value you give on all sides. And then you can, uh, if you want to specify one particular side, you could do you know, padding left, padding right, and so on. Okay. All right, uh, finally, you have the button. Um, the button is a 
general regular button, but uh, we have changed its uh, height and width and made it colorful. So yeah, with uh, specifying the height and width, we make it square and big. Um, depending on the device's uh, screen size, you may want to uh, make it you know, flexible, smaller, or bigger. Uh, but this is just an example uh, for now. And then here we specify its color, okay? And finally, we make the text also pretty big, um, 96 uh, SPs, and that's why the zero looks big. By the way, later we'll see when, you, uh, when we come back to discussing UI, that our die is not just going to you know, show up a number, it will be an actual die with, uh, uh, with the small dots on it uh, and so on. Uh, but no, that is going to be uh, another lecture a bit later. Uh, right now we want to, we want to use a you know, fairly good attractive UI, but not focus too much on that. Okay, so um, let's pause here and we'll come back to uh, the wallet activity in the next video.